Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar. And this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. <clears throat> Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. Vishvesham satchitanandam, vandeham yokhilan jagat. Chari karti, bari bharti, sanjari harti, leelaya. We, in this course, are concentrated on studying the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the major types of four types of Samasas in Sanskrit, Avyayi Bhava, Tatpurusha, Bahubrihi and Dvandva, in that order as stated in the Ashtadhyayi. Tatpurusha, Tatpurusha Samasa is by far the most productive of all the Samasas. There are also different types of Tatpurusha Samasa as compared with the other Samasas. Panini has also composed several sutras in order to explain the Tatpurusha Samasa as compared to the other types of Samasas. Be it Samasa Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutra or Samasa Swara Vidhayaka Sutra there are more sutras explaining the Tatpurusha Samasa than the other Samasas. The derivation of the Tatpurusha Samasa can be summed up in the form of an equation in this way, where we have x plus y is equal to xy. x and y are two different independent entities in terms of the meaning as well as the word form as well as the accent, but they are interrelated. So the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together into one unit. So then the process happens and one output is generated xy. This is one form xy in terms of one meaning, one word form and one accent. Now this xy has y as an element which acts as a head. This is the speciality of the Tatpurusha Samasa. What it implies is that this xy as one unit, when it is part of a sentence and is interrelated to any other external word, it is only through this y that this interrelation is possible. When x is related to any other external word without going through y, then such a samasa is considered to be an exception and also noted down as a samartha samasa. We have studied the many varieties of tatpurusha samasa, namely vibhakti tatpurusha, then we studied karmadharaya, along with it was Dvigu. Then we studied Ekadeshi Samasa, followed by Nayatat Purusha Samasa. Then we saw Gati Samasa and also Pradi Samasa. We also studied the section in the first Adhyaya, fourth Pada, in which the term Gati is explained with numerous examples. Right now we are focused on studying the Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa stated by 2.2.19, Upapadam Ating. Upapadam Ating has got two words, Upapadam and Ating. Upapadam is 1 slash 1, the word designated as Upapada by 3.192, Tatropapadam Saptamistham, 
and because of this prathama vibhakti there is upasarjana saudhnya that is assigned to upapadam and this happens because of prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam and then upasarjanam purvam applies and there is purva nipata of this upapada because it occupies the first position in the samasa the other word in the sutra is ating which is also one one which is not a thing that is the meaning which is not a thing and words continued are sup and sahasupa as well as samartha padavidhi so the meaning of the sutra is any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a thing and repeat any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a thing and the questions that arise over here are what is the need of the word a thing in the sutra what is achieved by this particular negation and the reason why we ask these questions are is when we make not a thing and a condition for this sutra to apply the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta and subanta is available to us anyway because of the continuation of the words sup sahasupa etc so then we are forced to think that in this sutra the basic condition of sup and sahasupa does not apply rather sup and sah only will apply and so this will be the structure of the compound output generated by the application of this particular sutra namely upapadam ating so there will be a subanta having su at the end and a pratipadika in the beginning followed by another element which has dhatu plus krit and then su in the purva pada gets deleted and so we have just the purva pada pratipadika plus dhatu plus krit as the structure of the finally derived output in the usage as we have seen examples grahastha for example samastha god kambalad kumbhakar nagarakar etc all these compounds were of this particular kind where we have kumbh as the pratipadika of the purva pada followed by the verbal root kru plus the krit suffix an and the important point to remember over here is that this dhatu plus krit output is not independent to use a modern term it is not a free morpheme it is a bound element bound with the purva pada we have studied some sutras at the beginning of 3.2 now let us continue studying some more sutras the first one amongst them is tunda shoka yoho parim rajapana doho this is 325 there are two padas in the sutra tunda shoka yoho is the first one parim rajapana doho is the second one tunda shoka yoho is 7/2 which means upapada so tunda and shoka are the upapadas and the important point is that tunda and shoka they are related to the verbal root as karma parimrajapana doho is 6/2 which is converted to 5/2 meaning immediately after the verbal root mraja with pari as a preverb and nuda with ap as the attached preverb so parimruja means to rub and tunda means the belly apanuda means to remove and shoka means sorrow so now the words continued are dhatoho 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root pratyayah from 311 tatropapadam saptamistham from 3192 also kradatting 3193 kartarikrit 3467 which is also stating the meaning of 
the suffix as karta. Also the word karmani is continued from 3 to 1. Also importantly there is a statement added in the tradition alasya sukha harana yoho. So the output generated would finally convey these meanings alasya as well as sukha harana laziness as well as bringing the happiness. So now the meaning of the sutra overall is this. The suffix ka is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root mraja with pari as the preverb and the verbal root nuda with upper as the preverb when the upapada is tunda and shoka respectively. There are two elements stated as upapada and two verbal roots stated to undergo this suffix addition and therefore there is yatha sankhya nyaya tunda and shoka are related to parimraja and apanuda respectively. So if you have tunda plus am and shoka plus am and then parimraja plus ka and apanuda plus ka. In this case the sup that is am after tunda and shoka gets deleted and the final output that we get is tunda parimraja ka shoka parimraja ka. So the meaning is one lazy who rubs the belly tundam parimarshti tundam parimarshti this is the laukika vigraha literally means who rubs the belly but the overall meaning to be conveyed is one lazy fellow who keeps on rubbing his belly without doing any solid work tundam parimarshti so we have now tunda related to the action of rubbing as karma so there is semantic relatedness so now the compound will happen so tunda plus am plus parimrija plus ka this is the alaukika vigraha here tunda shoka yoho parimrija apanadoho has applied and added the suffix ka upapadam ating has applied and the samasa has taken place so this is now called a samasa so this is now called a pratipatika then supodhatu pratipudika yoho applies and deletes am so you have tunda plus zero plus parimraja plus a and then we get the form tunda parimraja as a finally derived compound output tunda parimraja which means one who rubs the belly but a lazy fellow similarly one who removes the sorrow one who brings the happiness, if this is the meaning to be conveyed, we have the laukika vidraha shokam apanudati. Shokam apanudati. So shoka is related to the action of removing denoted by apanuda as karma. So there is semantic relatedness. And so we have shoka plus am plus apanuda plus ka as the alaukika vidraha vakya. Now Tunda shoka yoho parimrajapana doho allows us to add the suffix ka over here and then there is samasa saudhnya followed by the pratipadika saudhnya followed by the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho applying and removing the suffix am. So now we have shoka plus zero plus apanuda plus ka that is a and then we join them together and we get the form shoka apanuda. Because of the marker ka, nuda does not become noda, mraja does not become maraja. Because the marker ka is triggering the operation of negating guna as well as vriddhi in this particular case. The sutra is nyiticha. Now very importantly, the tradition of the later period adds this particular statement to account for some such compound words which get added in the course of time and which require the grammatical sanction. So the statement is kaprakarane mula vibhusa upasankhyanam. What it means is in the section of the suffix ka, words that begin with mula vibhuja are also to be added.
Mula Vipuja is a group of words which is appended in the later tradition to this particular sutra. Now the point is who distracts the roots Mulani Vibhujati, Mula Vibhujaha Rathaha. Similarly one which removes the nails, Nakhani Munchanti, Nakha Muchani, Dhanumshi. So we add the suffix ka. So Vibhuja has got Bhuja as the verbal root ending in J. Now when we add the suffix ka, the output generated becomes Akarant, ending in the vowel a. Similarly, Nakhani Munchanti, the verbal root is Mucha Muncha, ending in Ch. When the suffix ka is added to it, after this particular statement, the Pratipadika, final Pratipadika, becomes a vowel ending Pratipadika. It ends in short a, Nakha Mucha. Similarly, we have another example where seasons which should be protected from the crows is the meaning to be conveyed. And so we have kake bhyaha guhita bhyaha and also kaka guhaha tilaha. So kake bhyaha guhita bhyaha, this is the input meaning and kaka guhaha is the output that is generated by adding the suffix k. Similarly, one which brings happiness on earth, kau modate, in this sense the word kubuda gets derived. Guna as well as vriddhi operations are negated in these cases because of the marker k added to the suffix, the sutra kniti cha applying. Now we go to the next sutra, Pre Tadnyaha. This is 3 to 6. Pre is 7 slash 1, which means Pra is the Upapada, and Dadnyaha is 5 slash 1 of Dadnya, meaning immediately after the verbal roots Da and Dadnya. Da means to donate, Dnya means to know. Words continued are Dhatoho 3191, which means immediately after the verbal root. Pratyayaha 311, Tatropapadam Saptamistham 3192, also Kradating 3193, Kartarikrat 3467, which is also stating the meaning of the suffix as Karta. Also, the word Karmani is continued from Karmanyan, so the meaning overall of this particular sutra is the following. The suffix ka is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal roots da and nya with the preverb pra as the upapada and when the upapada is related to the meaning denoted by the verbal roots as karma. I repeat, the suffix ka is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal roots da and nya with the preverb pra being the upapada and when this upapada is related to the meaning denoted by the verbal roots as karma. So we have the meanings. He donates everything extensively. He donates everything extensively. In order to express this, the Laukika Vigraha is Sarvam Pradadati, where Sarva is related with the action of donating extensively as Karma. So there is semantic relatedness and therefore there is Samasa Prakriya that happens. So Upapadam Ating applies and the Sutra Pre Dadnyaha adds the suffix Ka and so we have Sarva plus Am plus Prada plus Ka. Now, Samasa Saudhnya happens, so Pratipadika Saudhnya applies and then the Sutra Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes the Supratyaya that is Am over here. So we have Sarva plus 0 plus Prada plus K and in K the sound K is deleted by Tasya Lopaha. So we have Sarva plus 0 
plus prada plus a then a in da is deleted by atoloka teacher so we have sarva plus pra the a sarva prad sarva prad means he donates everything extensively one who donates everything extensively similarly when the meaning is one who knows the path completely panthanam prajanati this is the laukika vigraha and so there is the suffix k added after the verbal root nya upapadam ating states the upapada samasa and so we have pathin plus am plus pradnya plus k as the alaukika vigraha so samasa saudnya happens pratipadika saudnya happens and then supadhatu pratipadika yoga applies so we have pathin plus zero plus pradnya plus a and then because of the suffix a which has a marker k the vowel a in nya is deleted and then we have pathin pradnya and then na at the end of pathin is deleted and finally we get pathip pradnya as the finally derived compound output which means the same thing as the laukika vigraha then we go to the next sutra samikhya sami is 7/1 of sam when it is the upapada khya is 5/1 of khya which means immediate immediately after the verbal root khya words continued are dhatoh 3191 which means immediately after the verbal root pratyayah from 311 and tatrupapadam saptami stham from 3192 also krudatin from 3193 kartarikrut 3467 which is also stating the meaning of the suffix as karta and now karmani also is continued from karmanyan so now the meaning of the sutra is the suffix k is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root khya with the preverb sam as the upapada and when the other upapada is related to the meaning denoted by the verbal roots as karma i repeat the suffix k is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root khya with the preverb sam as the upapada and when the other upapada is related to the meaning denoted by the verbal root as karma so here is the meaning one who talks extensively about the speech the word go stands for speech so gam sanchaste gam sanchaste this is the laukika vigraha and then the sutra samikhya as the suffix k in this particular sense so we have go plus am plus sam kya plus k upapadam ating applies and then samasa saudnya takes place then pratipadika saudnya takes place then supodhatu pratipadika jo applies and we have go plus zero plus sam kya plus a and tasya lopah has already applied so we have a in place of k now we have go plus zero plus sam kya plus a and then when we join them together we get go sankhya as the finally derived compound output go sankhya meaning the same as gam sanchaste gam sanchaste the suffix k is the exception to the generally stated suffix an in 3.2.1 where the suffix an is stated there are no specific conditions laid down all you need is karma as upapada and then after any verbal root you can add suffix an no specific condition or as far as the ending of the verbal root is stated whether it is akaranta akaranta nothing is stated after any verbal root an can be added the conditions laid down are too generic and using which multiple number of forms can be generated or also coined in fact that is what is being done in the other rules however 
specific conditions are laid down for the respective suffixes to apply and generate compounds. So, if the verbal root ends in long a, only then suffix ka is to be added and so on and so forth. Now, this particular relation between an and ka is termed as utsarga and apavada relation. Utsarga apavada relation in the Paninian grammatical tradition. To summarize, the suffix ka is applied in a limited domain with specific verbal roots and specific words as upapadas. These compounds are observed to get a limited meaning scope. It gets narrowed down to only a specific sense. In some cases, the upasarga and karma are both stated to be the upapadas, upasarga as well as karma. They both are stated to be the upapadas. We also note that the sixth case is used where seventh case was expected, meaning the upapada and also the verbal roots. So, this can be considered to be the stylistic feature of Ashtadhyayi. These are the texts referred to and we continue studying the Upapada Samasa in the light of the suffixes stated in 3.2 in the coming lecture as well. Thank you very much.